He's a realtor now. Uh, Big Mike here with Hayes Entertainment. Today's episode, we got NFL veteran Jason Babin. Like what we're doing, hit the subscribe button. I'm Jason Babin, and welcome to the I Only Touch Greatness podcast. Looking for the most beers on tap? Great steaks, great staff. Head over to the John B. Pub. We got the best beers, steaks, chicken wings, nachos in town. Come see us at the John B. Pub. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Come sign up for our football pool. Say hey, St. You. The number one sports podcast in Vancouver with Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. I only touch greatness podcast. Only Touch Greatness Podcast with Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. We are going live. What's up, guys? Hey, how you doing? I'm Ryan, by the way, and this is Big Mike that you've been talking to. All right, Ryan and Big Mike. Hey. Thank you very much uh, for taking the time for us today. We appreciate it. Yeah, man. Shoot, Mike. Go ahead. Um, okay, uh, could, for those that don't know, could you, could you please tell us where you grew up and what your childhood was like? Uh, Jason Babin here. I grew up in uh, Pawpaw, Michigan, a uh, small town, uh, southwest corner of the state, a uh, little rural setting, uh, outdoor activities, hunting, fishing, sports. It wasn't, um, wasn't much more than that, that's for sure. When did you start playing football? Uh, I think when I was about eight, that's when uh, when it started. Uh, my dad and some of the guys kind of uh, got the league going uh, when I was uh, around that age. Do you play any other sports growing up? Uh, I wrestled. Wrestling was probably my better sport. Um, okay. uh, my talents and abilities. Uh, I definitely had some professional opportunities in that world. Not WWE, but uh, actually okay. wrestling. Uh, track. I, re- I love track. Um, I got rid of it. Uh, um, otherwise, I would have done some of the activities in college, probably. Did you say impact wrestling? No, like real wrestling. Oh, like, okay. WWE. Uh, like, okay, I, I, I thought you meant like a competition, like the, like the competition to WWE. But yeah, I know yeah. what you mean. Real wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who did you mirror your game after or try and play like growing up? Uh, you know, truthfully, my, uh, my dad wasn't a big sports uh, sports guy. And, um, you know, my passion was the outdoors and, uh, I actually wanted to join the military. Um, but, uh, due to my asthma, they, they said no. So I guess, uh, sports was my, uh, was my backup plan. What was it like, uh, attending Western Michigan and playing for the Broncos close to home? Uh, I mean, it had some, it had some perks and then I also had some downsides, you know, in the sense of everyone knew who you were, uh, locally, uh, you know, having your town nearby, but, uh, 
you know, it was, it was probably one of the best experiences of, of my life. I think college is, you know, people that get the opportunity to play college sports, it's, it's really something that just kind of defines your personality and defines who you are. And, and uh, without that, I don't, I don't think I'd be who I am today. If you could put, if you could pick any actor to play you in a movie, who would it be? Uh, if I get, if I had a time machine, it would be Sylvester Stallone. Okay. I yeah. like it. I like it. Uh, you had a very successful college career, obviously earning a two-time Mid-American Conference MVP and first team All-Star in 2002-2003. Um, is that, is your college career kind of when you figured, you know what, I'm going to go pro? Is that like when it kind of set in or did it set in before that? Uh, you forgot the big one. Did I? Play, Playboy All-American. That's back when we used, to get, we, used to, uh, we used to have a good time. We used to invite us out. We had a, we had a long, you know, long weekend. So that was before Oh, the, really? Okay, I, didn't, I, I, I didn't see that stat. That's pretty cool. Well, yeah. And, um, more about that. My, uh, yeah, I, was, I can tell some stories about that. Not here. <laughs> uh, my, uh, my grandpa actually went to high school with uh, Hugh Hefner and, uh, uh, in Chicago. So I, my mom, she's my mom, you know, they're definitely old school parents. They made me uh, write thank you notes when I got back. And uh, I wrote a thank you note and um, I got a reply back said, you know, I put it in there about my grandpa. You guys went to school together. I think they were maybe a class apart. So remember your grandpa and you really appreciate it. It's the first time anyone's wrote me a thank you note. You're welcome to come out anytime. So my, uh, my friends or my boys at the time, they were like, yes, that's our ticket. We are in. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> if you could sit down for dinner with anyone dead or alive, who would it be? You know, someone asked me this recently, but um, I think I'd pick Genghis Khan. Okay. Sweet. It's a good one. Uh, Taking me back to 2004, NFL draft, uh, when you got drafted to the Texans, 27th overall, where were you and did you know they were interested? Um, yeah, definitely knew they were interested. Um, we knew it was going to be uh, one or two teams, and uh, we, had a, we had a pretty solid idea of conversations. Um, uh, but I was in my hometown. I didn't want to uh, – I don't, I don't, what New York wasn't my, wasn't, isn't my spot. Not, not a place I really like to go anyways. So I wanted to be with the people that uh, were with me from the beginning to the end. And uh, we had a little, uh, a little bar restaurant in my hometown of Pawpaw, Michigan. And it must have felt good when they traded away their second, third, fourth, and fifth to get you. Oh, absolutely. It was, uh, it was a roller coaster. I mean, we, I think my wife and I are on the plane, uh, 6 a.m. flight the next day heading to Houston. Right. Yeah, played a couple solid seasons with the Texans and then were traded to the Seahawks for a short stint. Uh, were you caught off guard? And you had an injury, correct? Is that what kept you off the field really in Seattle? You know, it's one of those things where, yeah, they were like, oh, well, he's, he's fast, he's, he's athletic. We can, we can put him at outside linebacker. You know, and truthfully, I was, I was an okay outside linebacker. You know, my, my real skill set was just rushing the passer, you know, getting after it, playing defensive end, and that, that true, you know, 4-3. And honestly, it took till I think year six or seven until I actually got to play that role for the first time in the NFL. And that's when I had my, you know, Pro Bowl breakout, you know, year. And then, you know, it, my career kind of changed. So it was really my career was, you know, kind of divided up into two halves, you know, outside linebacker and uh, a defensive end. Okay. So I got Joe dropping in here from the Philly Philly podcast out in Philadelphia. He uh, got a couple of questions for you. How's it going, man? First of all, thank you for letting me on, man. Thank you, both of you guys. How are you guys doing today? Good, thanks. Good, good. Thanks for coming on. So, so I'll make this quick. Uh, first of all, Jason, thank you for the years you gave to Philadelphia. Obviously, it was a lot of fun watching you play. Um, so I want to just start off real quick with it's obviously draft night, you know, so I want to see if you can maybe take us back to the night that you were drafted, just the emotions you went through and, you know, how that changed your life going forward. Uh, well, for those people that know me, I'm, I'm not an emotional guy, you know, my <laughs> dad face are, you know, pretty, pretty damn similar. Um, and honestly, I didn't, I didn't really have too many expectations. You know, I wasn't, uh, wasn't something I really had dreamed about as a kid to be a professional athlete. I mean, what, obviously I worked my butt off to get it, but, um, it wasn't like, oh yeah, we made it. You know, it was, um, I had, uh. I had other things too. I wanted to wanted to accomplish, you know, in life. So it wasn't it wasn't the end all be all for, for me. So I guess my emotion my emotion meter wasn't uh, wasn't pegging. 
<laughs> well, that's good to hear. That's, that's something good to be able to be stay calm and everything. So, you know, obviously over at my channel, uh, Philly Philly Podcast, we do cover the Eagles. Um, and you had a career year as far as sacks with the Eagles. Um, could you just kind of let me know about like, you know, maybe a memory or, or memories that you've had in Philly in your time playing there? Well, for those people that really know the Eagles game, I, if you ask me, like, what's it, what's it like to play for the Eagles? And I tell them, I said, it's like this. You win the game, they're going to give you their, your daughter's hand in marriage. If you lose the game, they're going to beat your ass with a lead pipe. <laughs> <laughs> There's no in-between, and they're going to know how they feel. But uh, that's what, you know, that's, I mean, they're, they're, they're true fans. They're, they're emotional. They, all they want you to just win, baby. So uh, it's, it's a unique environment to play in. But I, I'm actually still there quite a bit. I do. I still have a lot of rental properties there, and we're always adding to them. So I'm in and out of Philly, Jersey area, you know, on the uh, now and then. That's awesome. And now I, you know, kind of piggybacking off what you were saying with the rental properties, I did read that you you kind of started a um, rental uh, agency, I should say, with uh, a former teammate of yours. Could you just like let me know what kind of sprung that off? Like, how, how did you get into realty? Well, I've always had a passion for construction. My dad was a uh, um, did dabbled in it a little bit. Um, I grew up in the trades, so I learned how to do everything from electrical to concrete to framing to roofing, HVHC. And when I was playing football, I would, you know, I'd, I'd buy old crappy houses and in the off season, I would fix them up, you know, maybe some, but, you know, I did myself, but I hired a lot of it out, but I, you know, I knew what I was doing, you know, knew to hire, how to hire. Um, and I just kind of kept doing that. And then when I got close to retiring, I, um, I wanted to have a storefront because I also had a construction company as well. So we build neighborhoods and apartments and, and I wanted to have something just kind of frame it up nice and neat, but I also wanted to do something because I, Towards the end of my career, noticed that guys got got done, and and I still work with a lot of guys um, now that when they finish football, they don't know what to do next. You know, there's this there's this boy, this missing thing. You know, and the, they're used to the routine, they're used to competing, they're used to going after something. And now they're you know they got they're young, they have money, they have their family, they have a house, all that stuff. But you know, I, I had a I was out at a wedding in Scottsdale talking with a guy just retired his year one of retirement. And, He's like, Babs, I'm, I'm losing my mind. I need something to do. You know, so what I did is I wanted to create something that these guys could take. Because remember, you're playing your whole time in the NFL. You're working towards a skill set. You know, you can't, you're not doing internships. You're not working on your craft. You know, you're not doing stuff at the bank or, you know, getting an MBA. You're working on, on, on your footwork. You're working on your skills. So when you get done, it's like, okay, now what do I do? I mean, you, know, you can't expect a guy that's 30 years old to go take internships in the cubicle. That's, it's, it's tough. So I created the franchise with Red Zone Realty, where it's turnkey, right? So these guys obviously have the skill set. People know them. They, they understand real estate. They understand, you know, how, how deals are done. And when we put it, we position them in a way where they can go on and because most guys want to be in real estate anyways or own real estate. So we kind of have some different hybrid models to help them, uh, you know, take that bridge to the next step. That's awesome. So, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hey, go ahead, Joe. Oh, no, yeah, I'll make this one quick. I do have to get back to our draft show. I do, <laughs> yeah. like I said, appreciate so much that you guys gave me this time. But the last question I did want to ask, since it is draft night, you kind of said it with, with what you just said now, but what you know, uh, type of advice can you give players getting into the NFL now on and off the field? Because I know there's more to it than just going out there and playing every Sunday. Well, I, I think the biggest thing is, is people don't really – guys – you know, because I'll, I'll have the rookies over to my house. We'll, we'll talk. We deal with a lot of them with the real estate, with property management. You know, but I tell the young guys, listen, don't buy a house. Just here's a furnished, here's a furnished place. All your bills, one check. Just focus on football, you know, because that window is so short and you have so much unique opportunities during that window where take advantage of those, you know, because when you're playing football, doors open really easy. And what I did when I played is I wanted to learn about different stuff. I wanted to learn about how do I do a multifamily development? You know, when I played football, it was damn easy. I found the guy in the company that I thought was the best. I said, Hey, can you teach me how to do this? I'd love to learn. You know, I called him up today. He'd probably be like, who, what? I, I, no, no, get out of here. <laughs> you know? So while you play is one, I tell guys, listen, don't, don't worry about getting rich by play folks on football, save your money Two, take advantage of you, many unique opportunities as you can. And three, put your ego and pride to the side. Cause when you don't play anymore, no one's going to give a shit who you are. You'd be another guy in line. That's awesome. Yeah, we that's still a good way to shit. look at it. Yeah, we still give a shit, but that's a good way to look at it for sure. <laughs> yeah. 
And Trey Lance just went to fucking uh, San Fran. Yes, sir. Uh oh, yes, sir. it's coming. Yeah, it's coming to the bank. Thank you so much, guys. Hey, I no really worries, appreciate Joe. This so much. Hey, enjoy enjoy your draft special. Thank you. And you guys have a great day. Yeah, you too, bud. We'll Take talk care, to you Joe. Soon. Okay, Mike. Hey, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jason, uh, so after uh, the Texans, you went to the Seahawks, and then you bounced around their league a bit, uh, had a great year with the Titans, and then back to the Eagles again. Um, can you give us a little story about each place you had to stop? And do you, it was one team more memorable than the other? Uh, you know, Nashville, obviously, was the, was the breakout year. It's the first time I you know, got, to, got to play my uh, desired position, defensive end, and, and just got to cut loose and kind of, you know, really play the way I wanted to play. Um, and I wanted to stay there, honestly, but that was the year that Jeff Fisher got let go. And, you know, so it was like, I don't know what's going to happen. You don't want to resign here. And, it, and it's a great place to live. You know, we live a little south of the city, uh, still like visiting the city. Um, so it was, it was definitely great, great memories. Um, and I go back to the alumni stuff. Uh, obviously, last year we didn't do any stuff, you know, with alumni. Yeah. But uh, and then, then Philly, you know, Philly was, uh, was a cool situation because I'd, I'd never been in that uh, – that media bubble, you know, where everything's just absolutely pulverizing. And then going from, <laughs> from uh, that situation in, in, uh, to Jacksonville where it didn't matter really who you were, you know, Trevor could go sit down at Dick's wings tomorrow and they'd be like, Hey, <laughs> you want a water? You know, it would, it would be maybe, maybe a little more, a little more, you know, craziness than that, but you know, just a different, totally different vibe. What's the greatest invention of your lifetime? Oh, yoga pants for sure. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Nice. <laughs> Make the world a better place. I mean, everybody's yeah, and a lot of them were the Lululemon. I don't know if they have those in the states, but they're from Vancouver. They're from oh. Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> they did. They do have them in the states. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're because they're invented here in Vancouver. So well, we we love we definitely love our Lululemon pants as well. That's right. <laughs> uh, Two time Pro Bowler. Um, what was it like playing in that game? Oh, terrible. It was such a waste of time, <laughs> but, uh, definitely a fun experience. That's for sure. Okay. Uh, what would you uh, like one to be known one. for? Oh, go ahead, Mike. No, go ahead. All okay. right. What would you like to be remembered for? I think for me, uh, the most important thing for me, I, I have three boys. So, and I, I coach youth sports, you know, and I'm obviously involved in a lot of different community stuff and, Obviously, I put a lot of emphasis um, on sports as far as how it can help uh, all situations because of my background. So I, I think for me, I realize what I enjoy now the most is help shaping, you know, young men into being what men should be, you know, because there's a lot of kids out there that don't don't really have good examples, you know, as far as this is how this is how a man acts, you know. Yeah, we're supposed to be big, strong and tough, but we're also supposed to be polite, treat women with respect, you know just be a, a well-rounded, you know, young man. And uh, I think that's something that's kind of got lost uh, as of late. And uh, I, I really enjoy uh, instilling that in, uh, in my kids and, uh, and youth, you know, that I've come in contact with. And definitely, I agree with that kind of stuff. I, I like to be the gentleman. I'm the sweetheart to these ladies, you know? I just... Well, the way I, the way I explain it to people, I said, listen, I might put a tuxedo on and, and, and open the door for my wife, but I will, I will kick your ass. Yeah. So. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> um, I remember one of your highlights, uh, you ended up with a, a ton of uh, Andre Ellington's hair in your hand. Were you shocked at that point? Uh, a little bit, but more, you know, <laughs> act, you know, cause everything happens so quickly, but, um, I, I still have some saved. We're, we're planning on doing some, uh, uh, framed uh, pictures and a little piece of the dread and maybe like one of 20 for some, for some charity stuff rolling out here soon. <laughs> That's <Do> you, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the first CD you ever had? Uh, I remember the first tape I had. Okay. You, yeah. Tape too. I got, it was vanilla ice. There you go. Ice, ice baby. That's right. <laughs> yeah. okay. That's what my, my first tape was the MC hammer. You can't touch this, but uh, that's how old I am. What, what made you finally call it quits? Uh, and do you miss it? I would definitely um, miss it. Uh, but the reason I think for me was, one, 
uh, my kids were older in school, so I would just go through the season. I mean, I really wanted a Super Bowl ring. That was that was my big driver. You know, I hopped on with uh, with Baltimore, with with the Cardinals, with the Jets, trying to you know hop on for that uh, that ride. Um, but being away from the family, you know, half a year just just really sucks. You know, and I, I wanted to be a part of that, and I wanted to start uh, you know coaching them. They were getting older, so. It was, and plus, you know, <laughs> whether you like it or not, Father Time you know, says, hey, let's, let's wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. And 2014 got inducted into the Hall of Fame at Western Michigan. That's a huge and proud accomplishment. Yeah, that was, that was, that was a cool weekend. That was definitely a cool weekend for sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite stadium you ever played in? They're all, they're all definitely different. Um, but I, I would say the loudest uh, is, is the Seahawks Stadium. Yeah. I mean, just the way the sound reverberates, your ears are just, just echoing inside your ear canal when, it, when it's, when it's uh, really, really just packed. Oh, yeah. Um, we, don't, we don't even stop yelling. Like, we stand there and we scream the whole time. If the person inside you is not screaming, I'm screaming at them. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it, and I've been on both sides of it, playing against them, playing for them. So. Yeah, definitely. Ways. Uh, what's your biggest football moment, would you say, in your career? Um, you know, I, I think for me, uh, I think it was when I got my, my 18th sack. You know, it was, it, was, uh, it was just one of those moments where, you know, I'm like, all right, not that I made it, but it's like, okay, this is – I did this. You know, like it's, it's going to stand. It's going to be around for a while. It's, it's, it's got substance to it. Oh, what's one That's life huge. lesson that you will never forget? Uh, I think it was early on. I uh, actually broke my leg my first game of my senior high school season. Oh. And I remember, you know, lit, staying in the hospital. And uh, and I think it was my mom that said, you know, Jason, everything happens for a reason. And I'm like, you're, you're freaking crazy, mom. <laughs> this is <laughs> terrible, you know. And uh, I, I, that moment stuck with me. And, and I've always, always tried to keep that perspective that everything happens for a reason and you just got to trust the process. What's your favorite uh, piece of sports memorabilia that you collected over the years? You know, I don't, I don't have too many uh, sports memorabilia, um, but uh, I do have. Did you, guys, a, did you guys trade jerseys off or anything back then? No, no, not I, really. I, even at all my offices, everyone always comes in. I think they're expecting to see a bunch of jerseys at, you know, different offices. And they come by and there's literally no sports memorabilia. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm bad at that. Do you collect anything nowadays or over your career? Um, not really sports memorabilia, no. No, not, it uh, didn't really have to be sports memorabilia. Some people collect pogs back in the day or. Oh, no, I, um, I'm a big out outdoor enthusiast. So I have, um, okay. I have a large collection of, uh, Toys? firearms. Oh, you need firearm. Okay. Yeah. Advanced firearms. And sometimes I'll get old ones that I find and I'll, I'll re I'll refurbish them, take them all apart, re -blow them and uh, put them back together. You know, stuff from the 1800s or 1900s. So, but wow, right that's now, awesome. My life's not my own with a, I got a 15, 13 and seven. So that all You're pretty busy then with that. I don't have, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, Jason, I just want to thank you uh, very much uh, for taking the time for us today and coming on and chat with us. We were big fans of you when you played and we uh, continue to be big fans of you and we appreciate the time. All right. Appreciate it guys. If you're looking for a mug, perhaps a hoodie, head on over to I only touch greatness.com. Looking for the most beers on tap? Great steaks, great staff. Head over to the John B. Pub. We got the best beers, steaks, chicken wings, nachos in town. Come see us at the John B. Pub. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Come sign up for our football pool. Say hey, sent you.